I'm going to talk about the alarming upsurge of violence, particularly gang-related activities, and the rising crime situation in Jamaica, in light of the recent flare-up in the Tivoli Gardens, Denham Town garrisons. I use the word garrison most reluctantly, and I'll tell you why later. I will point to some of the deeper underlying causes for Jamaica's long-standing engagement with crime and violence, and give my opinion as to how efforts could be made in calming and eventually eradicating this beast. You are in the spotlight. Be enlightened. Be informed. Click on the subscribe button and the notification bell if you're new around here. And you'll be kept up to date with the latest news and videos that are in the spotlight. I'm trying to build my channel with an international audience in mind. And therefore, in most of my videos, I try to speak in a neutral accent that would accommodate as much viewers as possible. However, for this video, I will deviate from this policy so that I may speak directly to my Jamaican peeps no, in unmistakable no. terms. First, let me establish my credentials that give me the license and the right to express my opinions on this very serious and troubling issue. A Jamaica me born and grow. Spanish town to be precise. And at this of me attend primary school, secondary school, and the little tertiary education that me get. Yes, at this of me get it too. I work in the civil service and I serve in the armed forces where I place my life on the line for Jamaica and our people them. All of my siblings, barring one, and my father, serve in one capacity or another in the security forces of Jamaica. So enough said. No. Now, I want to check out them recent headlines here. Uh, take a look on the screen. Check out them recent headlines uh, about crime and violence, especially in the recent days, you know, of what's going on down there in Jamaica. Check out these headlines and then make we talk. Now, when Jamaicans abroad who value them life or foreigners wishing to visit as tourists see them kind of headliner, they might think twice or thrice before landing on the rock. And it appears that the collective reaction of the vast majority of Jamaicans is a throw up the moms in, in nihilistic surrender that betrays helplessness and hopelessness with comments like Jamaica mash up, Jamaica gone to the dogs and other such self-deprecating mutterings. But how did we manage to arrive at this deplorable state of affairs? Well, I would say that it wasn't a singular path that got us here. Our recent history is paved with the numerous policy shortcuts, long cuts, back passes, and ducking and diving that the nation was dragged through to get us to where we are today. However, to go into all of that now is beyond the scope of this short video. Nevertheless, I'm going to point to the major culprits and hopefully, it would start my viewers on the path of some kind of introspection and onward to some kind of meaningful action. First, let us take a look at our music and entertainment culture. It is not accidental that our music, especially dancehall music, is now coming under the spotlight. Even the most casual of observers would not fail to notice the unfortunate degeneration of the music scene. They would also be quick to point out that the decline more or less started under the dancer genre. But here's the anomaly that should cause great concern and embarrassment to Jamaica. The foreigners that have adopted the dancer genre seem to be achieving greater economic successes more than its Jamaican originators. Go figure that one. Jamaicans at home and abroad have apparently gravitated towards the more deleterious and disastrous iteration of the music as evidenced by some of the nonsensical, useless and unedifying lyrics that spew from the mouth of most of the artists. Truthfully, one runs the risk of becoming dumber after listening to some of the garbage on offer in recent times. After saying this, it might surprise you to know that I was once an ardent fan of the dancehall genre especially when guys like Lecturer, Professor Nuts, 
and a few others would delight and enthrall me with their genius for penning very witty and humorous lyrics that spoke to the conditions of society during their time, but to a great degree did not violate our sense of propriety and orderliness. The earlier incarnation of our music like Mento, Ska, Rocksteady and Roots Reggae did far more to create awareness and improve the social and economic conditions of Jamaica than the new phenomenon called dancehall. This is not being said to take away from the popularity or the contributions of dancehall music to the overall culture of Jamaica. What I am saying though is that we are all living witnesses to the degeneration and debasement of the music form that emerge with such great excitement and promise for the future of entertainment. Today you'll find that the vast majority of dancehall song lyrics are littered with vulgar and lewd profanities, glorification of criminality and gun violence, and other unwholesome behaviors. In other words, pure slackness. The most disappointing development for me is the female contribution to the degeneration of dancehall music. Unlike the sterling female contributions to the earlier forms of the music from women like Rita Marley, Marcia Griffith, Judy Mowat of the I Trees fame, Millie Small, Palm Hall, JC Lodge, who gave us such some great lyrics, and who also stuck with the classic definition of music as it was taught to me by my music teacher, the great Trevor Beckford, which is the arrangement of sounds having rhythm, melody, and harmony. Most of today's dancehall offerings are short on one or more components from this definition. Today's female performers seem only to offer lyrical materials that as far as I'm concerned is of benefit only to those pursuing studies in gynecology or porno. Me tired for you about the pum pum and other body parts. It appears that through the music, we have managed to elevate crude and boorish behavior to heights where young impressionable minds are exposed to it on a daily basis and the younger generation now adopt these less than remarkable people as role models and aspire to be like them. It seems like things have plummeted so far that whenever a new young artist like Coffee emerges and try to take the music back to a more wholesome path, they try to destroy them with slanderous accusations of being homosexual or fake and the likes. This does not augur well for the future of Jamaica in terms of human capital development. Now, the other side of the coin is the proliferation of the glorification of gun lyrics. Just like how historians and anthropologists will write in the future about the unmistakable connections between the spaghetti western and cowboy and Indian films and the development of violent crimes in Jamaica, so too they will write about the del deleterious effect of some crappy dancehall music lyrics on the development and escalation of crime and violence in the society today. An example of how the music genre has negatively affected the crime situation is the phenomenon of unsolved crimes, particularly murder. Through the music and other means, they have managed to incul inculcate the demonization of the good citizens who are trying to live up to their civic responsibilities, one of which is to cooperate and assist the duly constituted authority, especially the security forces. Today, the popular chant by any fledgling and hurry come up DJ looking for an easy forward from the crowd is for the informer of the dead. An informer in the twisted mind of the deviants is anyone that seeks to carry out their civic and patriotic duty by cooperating with the authorities to solve the crime problem. Jamaica, we need to fix up. We need to fix up ourselves and take the bulls by the hand. Yeah? We need to start to reject the forms of media offerings that have the power to corrupt the young. The government should enact laws and enforce existing laws that prescribe the dissemination of vulgar and crude forms of musical expressions on the national airwaves. Religious institutions should start utilizing their vast networks to do community outreach in order to educate and revitalize the teachings of moral values. That is if they too have not succumbed to the irresistible pull of self-aggrandizement and corruption. People, we have to start giving maximum cooperation to the security forces, regardless of the risk. If we want good, we know that we run nickel. We know our year, but we can't trust police to give information. There are many ways available now with technology, 
for us to give anonymous tips to the police. This is why I have healthy respect for this fellow called Sir P and his Politics Watch channel. He has found a way to protect himself while he exposes the rot in the society today. Big up to him. Other people could find equally innovative ways of helping the authorities. If the criminals get to know that they can no longer rely on their hostage communities being silent and fearful of them, and that their every move are being reported to the authorities, you would see how quickly the criminals will start dropping out or being arrested. This strategy is part and parcel of how countries in Europe, Europe and other sane climes have managed to stay on top of their crime problems. In the UK, for instance, their police need only to put up a sign at the scene of a crime, inviting the public to report any information to a given telephone number. Trust me, after that, the police phone has top ring till they've solved the majority of their cases. In the UK, people have not allowed themselves to shirk their civic, civic responsibility for fear of being labelled as an informer. As a matter of fact, their musicians don't make such dumb songs anyway. One of the other reasons why you see bad man is up on the rise and you know people fear them now and you know it seems like they're having a free reign is that bad man realize eh, the ordinary people them show them more respect than them show to the police and the security forces. Why do I say that? Now I was showing the two pictures, right? The first one, I was showing where you know, police, you know, authorities give the order that people must stay home or, you know, stay at home for this uh, restriction, COVID restriction thing. And this is how people behave. Yeah? See them? Enough of them sing our song, we nah, stay home and all them kind of thing. Here's the other picture. Where a bad man now say, all I don't know if you leave the street. And bad man only say it once. This picture you see here is a part of the popular West Street area, which is like a market in itself. Not even a dog or a puss you see in this picture. The bad man word is supreme. This is where we have gotten to, people of Jamaica. And this is what we need for change. Same way you can follow the instruction of the bad man, follow the instruction of the authorities, because it's for your own good at the end of the day. So this just illustrates my point. By the way, can anybody tell me where all these people who came out weeping and wailing and moaning at the time of what them call the Tivoli incursion? Because I don't really call it no incursion. You know? Incursion to me is when you, you, you invade a sovereign territory of another country or another region or something. Tivoli was not no sovereign territory. Tivoli, Tivoli is an area of Kingston, part of the sovereign territory of Jamaica. So I'm not calling it no incursion, but anyway, you all know what I mean. So where are those people who are claiming that no bad man are down at Tivoli and lie to Mattel and, you know, the, the present chief of defense staff who uh, I think he was a senior colonel or maybe was a brigadier at the time when this happened. He's now the CDS. So his services might be required again. These are the people that them all wanted to boot out the JDF or arrest them or, or disgrace them because of what they did to those innocent people of Tivoli and then I'm down and all of that. So I wonder where these people come from now who are now issuing orders and threats to the civilian, to the, to the ordinary citizens that they should obey them or suffer the consequence, which is usually death. Where are all these people who were crying more than the bereaved over what happened at Tivoli a few years ago? Show yourselves. So my people, if you all want to enjoy peace and prosperity on the rock, you all better start recognizing who the real enemies are and become proactive in rooting them out. They are among your brothers, your sisters, your fathers, your friends, and your neighbors. It's only a matter of time before they start looking closer to home for their next victims. And this is why I don't like the term garrison communities. It is as if the authorities have given up and abandoned these hostage communities into the hands of criminal gangsters. And their only useful purpose is to serve as a repository of assured electoral votes for the token political operative who is lucky or unlucky enough to be assigned to such bantu stands. Tell what you know to the authorities and stop being cowards. Be courageous and not cowardly like the criminals because cowards die a thousand deaths in their minds before they actually die. But they can only kill you once. 
Wa good. Thank you for watching and listening. Please like and share this video and leave a comment in the comments section below. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to the channel for the latest updates by clicking on the subscribe button and the notification bell below.